Once again, the Central California Women's Prison in Chowchilla, California is under investigation by the Department of Justice for allegations of sexual abuse of female inmates. Also included in the investigation is the California Institution for Women in Chino, California. Just not that long ago, folks, Officer Gregory Rodriguez at the Central California Women's Prison was arrested and charged with 96 counts of sexual abuse on approximately six female inmates there. He had a $7.8 million bail. His trial is supposed to be this month, September 2024, unless that changed. Also, just not that long ago, in late 2023, Warden Ray Garcia of the Dublin Federal Correctional Institution just outside Oakland, California, was sentenced to 70 months of sexual abuse or sexually abusing women in the form of having them stripped naked so he could take pictures for them. No, it's not funny. It's just so ridiculous. I had to giggle. I'm sorry. I, I don't mean uh, that this is a funny incident. It's very serious. Um, he's doing 70 months. So now, after these those two incidents, recent incidents, we're back to another investigation, which the DOJ says there's significant reason to go in and investigate these two women's prison. Does anybody not learn? I'm not saying anybody's guilty. It's alleged right now. The investigation is ongoing. But people told me in these other two investigations, when I did a video on each one singly, that's just false. That's not true. That's not going to happen. And I say, never say never. I've seen people in my investigations with 18 and 20 years that were known as uh, officers of the year. Uh, the wardens loved them. S uh, management loved them. They were excellent officers, except for one thing. They were either having sex with inmates or smuggling in contraband for inmates or both. Folks, unfortunately, you have to keep an open mind that we have a few bad apples. So with that said, let me say this. I have been to Chowchilla, to the Central California Women's Prison, twice, to speak with officers on all shifts about officer wellness and welfare and retaining officers and working together and exercising and eating properly. And if you're down and out, and you feel something's wrong, and you feel you're going to do something you shouldn't, talk to another officer. Please talk to another officer. I'm going to tell you right now, folks, this is going to paint the picture as all these officers in these two facilities are bad apples. Please, if you're not in corrections and you're watching this video, and I do have people subscribe to me that are not in corrections, that is not the truth. There's a few rotten apples tainting the image of the honest officers. And unfortunately, when an officer stops at a gas station in uniform to fill up their vehicle with gas, people read these headlines and all they see, this there's one of those dirty officers from Chowchilla. I met some very professional people there. The captains, the lieutenants, the warden that's there now, the assistant warden that's there now, they're not promoting this. They want it stopped as bad as anyone else. We have to get those rotten apples out of the system, prosecute them to the fullest extent because they are tainting the image of the profession and the honest, hardworking officers that are there. I want that to be made clear before I talk more about some bad apples. During my time, during, during investigations in the Florida prison system for 12 years, I would find, number one, that officers get manipulated by the female inmates. 
female inmates are better at manipulating the officers than the male inmates. However, just because a female inmate is manipulating you and you as the male officer is falling for it because they're giving you all these compliments and your chest is out and you're crowing and you're doing that and you're thinking, look at me, I'm pretty good on this compound. The female inmates love me. Something's dead wrong. You are falling into the trap, the big inmate manipulation trap. And guess what? Just because we're talking about how the female inmates manipulate you, that's no defense. You're going to jail. You're going to prison. You're going to felony probation if you fall for the inmate manipulation trap and have sex for female with a female inmate. You're cooked, buddy. You're not the king anymore. They will build you up. But if you don't have strong enough mind, intestinal fortitude, ethics, and respect for yourself, you're going to end up like that warden, 70 months in prison in California, and like that officer, Gregory Rodriguez, sitting in jail waiting his trial for having uh, sex with inmates. And in that trial, he is allegedly, it was not voluntary. He was forcing himself on female inmates. Another thing for those of you that don't know, it doesn't matter if the female inmate says, I want to have sex with you, officer. Oh, good, let's have sex. Everything's perfect. We're all good here because we both agreed to it and we both had fun. We're going to do it again. Nope. Sex is illegal in prisons. And even if the female inmate agrees to have sex with the officer, it's still considered rape because you are in a position of authority in uniform over that person. I don't care how many times she says, I want it more, I want it more. You have committed a felony and you're going to prison. Keep that in mind for those of you who never think about that stuff. Again, reiterate, talking about the few bad apples that taint the image of the honest officers. I've sat and interviewed many female inmates at Dade, at Lowell, okay, Dade Corrector down in Miami, Lowell, and during my investigations, and I'm just going to flat out not sugarcoat it, I said, now, this officer that's having sex with you and your girlfriend, so how does this work? What does he do for you? She said, well, it's like this. For all the, the institution, if a male officer or civilian staff member will bring us in uh, whiskey, vodka, alcohol in general, that's good for a blowjob. Easy blowjob. And how are they sneaking it in? You're going to, it's on the, my, some people's mind. Take a water bottle, empty the water, fill it with clear vodka, and that's one way of doing it. Another way of doing it, and Dave was a maintenance man uh, getting oral sex. He was um, having it in, when the plumbing crew came through the black back gate and all their supplies were there, he would have it in the supplies. It looked like just like a bottle of water. And then he would give it to the female inmate later once on the compound. There's many, many ways to get that alcohol into the prison, folks. Um, then she said, but you start bringing in drugs, bringing cocaine and things like that in, it's, you can get the whole shebang bang. You get the whole shebang, meaning you get the oral sex, you get the uh, regular sex, you get it all, folks. So... A lot of these female inmates will lure you into the trap. I want that to be known. Uh, it's wrong no matter what, which way it happens. They're saying these cases in California are forced sex. I would really hope, though, and it's not going to make a difference. Officers will still be arrested if they're having sex with the inmates. But I would hope DOJ investigators uh, find out, was it forced or was it manipulated sex? I'm going to use that verbiage. Forced sex or manipulated sex. It will not get the officers a free pass 
but it may be a lighter prison sentence. Probably would be. Because, you know, we have had female inmates manipulate male officers and agree to the sex and accept the contraband and then claim they were raped. Either way, it's a felony crime for the officer. So I just think it's always good in the investigation, though, to find the exact truth. The exact truth. It's not going to make it a whole lot better. Still looks bad. It's still very bad. Still a very bad crime. I just feel that we all as investigators should work very hard to get the exact truth. You're still going to get the dirty officer out of there if you do your investigation right and if it's happening. As my boss used to tell me, Gary, if it's not happening, we're not going to find any evidence that it is. And we're going to do a thorough, unbiased investigation and move on. If it's happening, something will pop up to show or prove phone calls, letters, tangible evidence, um, things of this nature, okay? Uh, something to prove that the allegations are real. Uh, that girl I just told you about, that female inmate that told me what they get in exchange for sex, she wore a wire. So here you are trusting the female inmate. She wore a wire for us went and talked to this officer. Uh, she was on the plumbing crew, as a matter of fact, and we uh, waited till after five o'clock. We had a, uh, 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 we, we made a leak in one of the uh, buildings, uh, not the dorms, but in one of the buildings, and had uh, that officer assigned in the right location and he was ordered to go escort her to that building to fix the leak. And the whole time she's fixing the leak, she's to talking to him about sex and bringing in contraband. And maybe when she gets out, they can be together. And boy, this guy's just eating it up. Talking about, yeah, I'll, I'll leave my wife for you and everything. It's, it's ridiculous, folks. Anyway, enough of that. Let's see what happens on this one. Let's see if somebody tells me, oh, it ain't happening again. Well, there is one comment that was made. If Officer Rodriguez was doing his dirty deeds at Chowchilla for years, somebody knew and didn't talk, didn't report it. Somebody else might be doing it also. And as for the warden, if you're in that high a position, you got to take pictures of naked inmates. You've got some mental issues. 70 months for you, sir. Folks, never forget 911. Got my shirt on from yesterday. Thank you. God bless. And please subscribe if you like this video.